Hello everyone. Welcome to <coughs> Lux Academy. Today we will discuss reproduction of bacteriophages. Last lecture we discussing the structure of virus. In this point, uh, structure of viruses involve DNA, RNA means it's a nucleic acid of virus and the prion and last one is the pterygons. These are the points we completed in a last lecture. Now are we now are going to the next point. It's a reproduction of bacteriophages. So ju just see the introduction of this bacteriophages. The bacteriophages are the virus that infect reproduction and lies the host means it's a bacterial cell. Bacteriating virus means it's a bacteriophages. Todd and Harrell in 1915 and 1917 separately discovered bacteriophages. Phage or bacteriophages, bacteriating viruses are intracellular parasites of bacteria. Bacteriophages insert dead nucleic acid into the host cell and reproduce using host biosynthetic machinery. The capsid remains outside the cell. In replication and expression of nucleic acid produce more copies of nucleic acid and capsid protein and assemble together to form new virus particles. We studied two points in this topic. One is the reproduction of bacteriophages such as one step growth experiment or one step multiplication curve. Second, multiplication of T4 bacteriophages. <laughs> One step growth experiment or one step multiplication curve. One step growth experiment was first carried out by Emory L. Lee Ellis and Max Dell Group in 1939 using bacteriophages. They also performed the block counting method for bacteriophages quantification. This study represents the start molecular virology, molecular biology, molecular genetics. The Delbrook were awarded Nobel Prize in 1969. In this experiment, study reveals fundamental nature of virus replication. One step growth it means the single or one cycle of virus growth is observed. In this experiment, excess host cells are infected by fast particles, which makes the infection synchronous. The observation made on host cell culture is similar to the observation made on a single cell infected by phage. Excess host cells are infected with the phage particles at a ratio of 1 to 10. This, the idea is to prevent adsorption of more than one virus per cell. The mixture is allowed to stand for 5 minutes. During this period, phage adsorbs on host cells. The mixture is then diluted 1 as to 1000 in broth to eliminate immediate absorption of virus particles released upon host cell lysis. Thus, only one step virus growth. Sample of diluted <coughs> mixture are removed at a regular time interval and plated for flock count. Assay in this case gives the measure of infection center, that is, the number of virus particles and infected bacteria. In bracket number of flock per ml and the end of breast cell when long number of flock forming units per ml is plotted against time a curve of the form shown in a figure number one is obtained this curve gives three distinct phases first one is the latent period second breast period or rise period third one is a plateau period so this First period is a latent period, this area covered by latent period. This one period or this area covered by breast side. And third one is the plateau period. This one is the another important step in the virus or one step growth curve. So the first see the latent period. Latent period, including two sub periods or two sub points, first one is eclipse and second one is the intracellular accumulation. So, they see these are the concepts. The time from infection until cell lysis is called as a latent period. Thus, there is no release of 
new virus particle from infected cell and so clock count remains constant. Each infected cell gives only one clock, means single virus infected in a single bacterial cell. So T2 fast has a latent period of around 22 to 23 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius. The latent period can be divided into eclipse and intracellular accumulation period. So this is eclipse. The, the time from infection until intracellular accumulation of phage is called as the eclipse period. T2 has about 11.5 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius eclipse period. In this period, gene expression, protein, genome synthesis occurs. In this period, the gene expression, protein, and genome synthesis occurs in this period. The second one, including <coughs> latent period, is intracellular accumulation. The time for initiation to end of intracellular accumulation of phages is called as the intracellular accumulation period. Here, phage proteins and genome assemble into new phage particles. The intracellular accumulation of T2 phage requires about 10 to 12 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius. Breast period or rise period, the time from infected host cell lysis from mutation to end is called a rise or burst period. At the end of latent period, each infected cell lys lyses and liberated new virus particle. In this phage, new virus particle release and flock count rise rapidly. Each new virus particle forms a flock on long susceptible host cell. T2 has a rise period of about 10 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius. Due to <coughs> unsynchrony of infection, the rise period is slightly extended. The plateau period. Plateau represents in the all infected host cell lysis. The newly liberated phage particles fails to meet uninfected host cell due to the high dilution. Thus, they, they here the flock count remains constant. Plateau period of T2 phage is 30 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius. Breast size. The breast size refers to the number of virus particles produced from the infection of a single cell. The breast size is calculated by using following formula. Breast size is equal to flock forming unit per ml at a plateau period upon flock forming unit per ml at a latent period. This one is the burst size calculated using this formula. The T2 phage has burst size <coughs> more than 100 flocks phages per cell. Burst size varies from 20 to 300 variants per cell for different viruses. Thanking you.